So we'll request Dr. Kang Zodik. Uh, he's a secretary of profession consular treatment medicine, Ministry of Health, Government of Mongolia. So I will request uh, Dr. Kang Zodik to elaborate on his topic. So he has topics here. Yeah. So I don't want to take more time because we have you know, uh, crossed more than the time. So please uh, uh, continue the talk. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good, good afternoon, everybody. And today, oh, okay. Okay. So we learn that when this time important, the Lord should have done something in nature order. The then that you get some talent to do. Can the boy get? You get nobody so so get so boy get. So so far as as more than one thousand years history among Mongols, it's because of Buddhism, you know, that the Buddhism uh, introduced among Mongols one thousand years ago. And it's uh, become in several part of uh, life in Mongolia. And because of its close relationship with Buddhism, this uh, system of its sin faced a very n n tragic history in the 20th century. And long Tanda chik ki larchu yas lagro. Ine tanda sawar ekba tampo sawil la di tar to tanda nangcho to niyam to tar. Ine nangcho to ta teva yechu yoba yensan di tanda amso sabul lomba turam nishu bi nanda marbu to taro marsho marsho tende chya. The the in the that nature that they are they are so far above that and that's why Chimbu did the jungle or chair. Then that new life is about the type of life. And so far above in Mongolia is also known as traditional Mongolian medicine. And but little is known about this system of medicine. And uh, maybe most of you d don't hear about uh, Uyghur Empire uh, because we have a series of uh, different uh, empires established in Mongolia in our history. Uh, history. And uh, there was an empire called Uyghur which uh, existed in 8th to 10th century. And uh, Uyghurs imported uh, uh, the distinct form of Buddhism from India and also Central Asian Buddhist king, uh, kingdoms as well as uh, Tibet. And later Buddhist Uyghurs served as a tutors of the uh, emerging Mongol el elites in the 13th century. And also uh, Uyghurs gave us uh, Mong Mongol script which I shown the second, the second script. Uh, and this Mongolian script is one of the ma many cultural uh, uh, gifts which we re re received from Uyghurs. And also many uh, technical terms of Buddhism and also Sawarikpa and Ayurvedic medicine uh, uh, were from Uyghur language. And in turn, a body of all those uh, loan words and names are uh, used in the later translation of Tibetan texts. And Mongolia is situated in the Central Asia, here, but uh, you know, uh, we have an independent country of Mongolia, and also and there are ethnic uh, Mongols in China, Inner Mongolia, and also in Xinjiang, and also Qinghai, Tsongombo, there are uh, some ethnic Mongols, and also in the Russian Federation, and there are three Buddhist republics of uh, Russian Federation, and uh, this one is uh, Repu Republic of Buryatia, and this one is uh, Republic of Tova, and uh, this one is Republic of Kalmykia. So 
all three republics are ethnically and culturally uh, related with Mongol, Mongolia. And we have this uh, Chinese, uh, Mongolian ethnic groups in China, so this inner Mongolia. It, uh, almost half of the whole Mongolian territory is in the inner Mongolia. And also some part of uh, Xinjiang, Uyghur, autonomous region is ethnically Mongol. And uh, after the uh, Uyghur din uh, dynasty, uh, Mongols uh, established their own Mongol Empire. You, uh, I think everybody knows about Chinggis Khan here. Yeah? And he established first Mongol state in the uh, 12, uh, 1206. And the Buddhism from Tibet was important. Uh, introduced among Mongols in t two different uh, phases. And f first one was uh, uh, introduction of uh, Sakya and Kagyu school of Tibetan Buddhism. It, it happened during the uh, Mongol Yuan dynasty in the 13th to 14th century. And then Gelugwa school of Tibetan Buddhism in the uh, uh, 16th century. And Greek Tibetan scholars such as uh, Sakya Bandita and Drogon Kyojil and Karma Bakshi visited in Mongolia during the Yuan time. And uh, because Yuan, uh, this is the how big was Yuan dynasty, and it, it covers all, all over Mongolia and, and uh, Siberia and also uh, Korea, Korean Peninsula, China, and uh, some, some part of Southeast Asia, and also Central Asia and Tibet also. And uh, because the, the, the territory of Yuan dynasty is uh, big and it also covers many different ethnic groups, they encouraged all mythical traditions, including Chinese, uh, Arabic, Arabic, Arabic means Yunani medicine, and also Tibetan medicine in their the, uh, territory. And also the also, it's the uh, same about the religions, you know, the M Muslim and Christianity and Buddhism, all <coughs> encouraged, and also these mythical traditions. And the most uh, privile privileged or important one was uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, because it was recognized by the imperial court, and also Tibetan Buddhist t texts uh, printed at the Yuan court in China in cooperation of Mongol patrons, Tibetan scholars, and Chinese craftsmen. And this one is known as Horbarma in Tibetan. It means uh, Mongol edition of Tibetan texts. And then uh, among this edition, we can find the uh, Bhagavata uh, Stanga Hiritaya, which was printed in Taito, the capital of Yuan dynasty, in sponsorship of uh, the mother of Yuan, em Yuan Emperor Kulu Khan. And this print is considered the uh, first uh, woodblock print of Tibetan medical text. And also Urgen Rinchimbal, the founder of Tibetan alchemical tradition, uh, visited uh, in Yuan dynasty and become royal tutor in between uh, uh, 1292 and 1293. And uh, what uh, the Savarikpa in Yuan dynasty was all, all, almost limited, only limited to the you know, Mongol il, 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 elites in the Yuan court, uh, royal, royal court. And some studies also uh, suggest that uh, four mythical tantra, Gyushi, was translated during that time. But we cannot find any uh, textual uh, proof so far. And uh, we, uh, for example, we can fi uh, see this Vajra uh, Bhareva Mandala, Dorje Jigjigi Mandala. There are Tibetan and Indian Buddhist masters depicted on the top. And here in the bottom, we can find this, these figures, uh, the emperors of Yuan and also queens. And this is the <coughs> some uh, picture from uh, from the Astanga Hridaya 
which is printed in uh, Daito, the Yon capital, in the uh, 1350s. And second provocation of Tibetan Buddhism uh, happened um, after the Yon, uh, collapse of Yon dynasty in 1368. And uh, th this uh, collapse of Yon dynasty also bring uh, uh, some other disunity and also uh, you know after the collapse of Yon dynasty there was uh, some chaos among Mongols and uh, disunity happened and there was uh, many small kingdoms established and so Delivoa school of Buddhism started uh, spread among Mongols uh, along with the attempt to revive the Yuan dynasty by several Mongol leaders. Among them was Altan Khan, uh, Tumut Mongols, who led the uh, uh, conversion of Mongols, uh, uh, which was influenced by the third Dalai Lama. And the uh, name of Dalai Lama, it was uh, given by Altan Khan himself. And also we had a, a Mongol king called Ligdin Khan, also, he also uh, uh, tried to revive the old uh, Sakya tradition among Mongols. And also, he uh, finished the trans translation of Gangyur into Mongolian. And also, Buddhist monastic tra tradition established in different parts of Mongolia. Uh, and with uh, direct involvement of uh, uh, Dalai Lama and Banjin Lama institutions. And also we, we have uh, reincarnation institutions like uh, Jebzun Damba uh, in central Mongolia. Because Jebzun Damba is like uh, Dalai Lama in Tibet in among us. And there are also uh, th th uh, th 13 reincarnated lamas who were officially recognized by the Manju court by the beginning of 20th century in central Mongolia. And all those uh, reincarnated masters, uh, also it's known as Hotokto, had their own uh, large monastery centers, and uh, uh, there are also, of course, medical faculties, which is known as uh, Membatatsa, where uh, monks study Savaripa. And also hundreds of Mongol monks uh, traveled to Tibet to study Buddhism, along with also, uh, of course, uh, medicine is one of the uh, five uh, sciences. And uh, they studied at the medical uh, institutions of Labrang, Kumbum, and Kondum monasteries, and as well as uh, Jagburi Medical College in central Tibet. And it's claimed that the first ever medical college in the tradition of Savaripa was founded in 1585 in central Mongolia, a physician called by Lapsan Chodak. And uh, there were uh, 220, 22 registered Mebatatsa in Mongolia by the uh, 1920s. And uh, Tibetan language was one uh, played very important uh, role in Mongolia. It was lingua franca. Because uh, Buddhist scholars, the, all the Buddhist scholars composed their works in uh, Tibetan and also instruction language for the uh, teachings were in Mongolian and uh, Tibetan. And uh, the main <coughs> text was the Jushi and its uh, uh, commentarial works. And still we have uh, many um, Co collections of uh, uh, Tibetan medical works uh, in different libraries and also in different uh, uh, monasteries. And also this uh, uh, tradition is still continue in some part of Mongolia today. And here is uh, the, some uh, depiction of Altan Khan. And, uh, and this is the first Jevzun Damba, Hortokto, Lopsang Dembe Gilta. And Evo is his uh, Root, uh, root guru, uh, Banching, Lopsan Chaja. And he also played a very important role uh, for the introduction of Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan medicine in Mongolia. 
uh, and he studied in Tibet for uh, almost 10 years. And uh, when he come back to Mongolia, he brought 50 Tibetan scholars. And uh, among the, those Tibetan scholars, uh, one was uh, a physician from Chakburi, who, uh, who called Lapsun Norbu. He was a uh, personal physician to Jezundaba uh, Otokta. And this is the monastery of Jezundaba. And uh, there was a uh, uh, quite big monastic community with uh, more than 10,000 Buddhist monks. And uh, they, they had a member that they called Sorg uh, Champengling. And it was one of the most important medical centers. Uh, in Mongolia, and also and there are uh, se several other big monastic centers. One example is this Gandan Dedil Monastic Center, and uh, its m medical faculty was also very famous. And another one is this Sorg Norbuling Membatatsung of Zaya Banditas Monastery. And we have uh, in after the British invasion of Lhasa in 1904, His Holiness uh, 13 Dalai Lama escaped to Mongolia and he remained there for almost one year. And along with him, uh, two pers uh, personal physicians of His Holiness visited in Mongolia. And it, it, this picture was uh, taken by some uh, Russian Tib uh, Tibetan studies scholars. Uh, and uh, this uh, this one is the Dirkin Moshi Chamba Tuang, and the and this one is Chapuk Damche Balteng, the two pers uh, personal uh, physicians of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This one uh, this one uh, was taken in Mongolia, and we also we <coughs> have translation of <coughs> uh, four medical tantras in Mongolia. This one is a handwritten one and also woodblock printing. And it was translated in 17th century. And uh, another one, uh, translation of Myanmar Thantap. And also we have some, also Tumbe. It's uh, bilingual, uh, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan and Mongolian. And also it's uh, uh, some description of the how missile plants grown. And this manuscript is uh, uh, kept in the National Library of Mongolia. And also we have uh, modern translations of uh, Sawarikba texts. It's translated from Tibetan, for example, for mythical tantras and Bengong. And this, th these three volumes are, uh, volumes are uh, uh, Bengong. And also uh, uh, translation of Mibu Shilin and uh, almost all major Tibetan medical texts that uh, translated into Mongolian. Uh, also, the, you, you know, the Samaraza is translated. And also we, uh, we have some recently written, recently written uh, t Tibetan texts you know, by some, uh, some practitioners. They also still using Tibetan as a uh, uh, written language. And uh, even though it reached its high, highest peak of flourishing at the beginning of the 20th century, so Bamitsi in Mongolia experienced a tragedy of repression and destruction. Uh, any other medical tradition uh, uh, happened. In 1911, after 300, uh, 300 years of rule under Manchu Qing dynasty, Mongolia declared its independence. And then in 1921, uh, the Soviet Union orchestrated a, a revolution in Mongolia. It was a uh, communist revolution and declared the establishment of People's Republic of Mongolia in 1925. And the Jebsen Dambas Institute, the uh, political and spiritual head of Mongolia, was uh, uh, consequently abolished. Ab abolished. And uh, new government took a, an aggressive policy 
to introduce a Soviet-oriented healthcare system in the country. But uh, at the first stage, they uh, tolerated Tibetan medicine, and uh, uh, they established some uh, hospitals which uh, both Tibetan and Russian style of me medicine uh, practiced. But uh, the Buddhism and its clergy and monks were discouraged, and he heavy taxation wa were imposed on Buddhist estab establishments. It means also uh, member tatsons. And it also caused the monks to disrupt and monasteries to be closed. And initially, two uh, system, as I like uh, say that uh, uh, two system was uh, collaborated, and uh, uh, Tibetan doctors and Russian doctors uh, were co-worked in the government hospitals. But there was some problems started because you know Tibetan medicine was successful for many cases, and also the, the Russian doctors failed in number, uh, numerous cases. And when I was uh, the, taking some uh, field works in Central Mongolia, uh, some old practitioner told me that uh, in 1930s there was a doctor who called it Dala Meramba who was very famous in the, uh, that locality. And, and there was some uh, spirit of jaundice, habitatis uh, at that uh, time in that uh, the, the localities. And the Russian doctors tried to, uh, tried to heal uh, the uh, jaundice patients, but they uh, failed it. But uh, Tibetan medicine was very successful for that uh, what uh, for that case and it uh, it bring the jealousy from the russian doctors and uh, of course then the competition between the two systems are arose and also this loyalty of patients to the tibetan, uh, tibetan medicine and its practitioners seen as a strong obstacle to the inst introduction of new si new health care system and also so uh, uh, a strong con uh, connection with Buddhism was seen as an anti-communist ideology and uh, perceived it as a threat to communist revolution and socialist modernization. And uh, so th that's why the government policy on traditional medicine totally changed in 1930s. And in 1933, the government issued a new act which uh, banned the practice of Tibetan medicine. And th this repression actually started in the 1922, when uh, the Mongolian communist leader Sukhvatar uh, died, and uh, they, this uh, Soviet, Soviet intelligence agents registered some uh, drama which says that the personal, uh, personal physi physician of Jason Lambohotot foisted that uh, uh, communist leader. And uh, we have uh, this great purge, I think uh, you heard about it. That it was the kind of you know, violence which uh, happened in 1930s uh, in Mongolia and also in Soviet Union. And at the climax of that great uh, uh, forge happened in uh, 1938, uh, and it lasted for uh, 18 months. And about over 18,000 monks killed dur uh, during that violence. And monks were not executed, were possibly lysed, it means uh, disrobed, and while uh, 746 of country's monasteries were liquidated. And the traditional medicine, which means uh, the Savarugba, suffered the greatest loss at, as its mouth and uh, were eliminated, and medical texts and medical substances were destroyed, and practitioners were killed or sent to uh, uh, remote labor, ca labor camps. And only a handful of them survived the, that great forge, and some of Survivors were actively involved in various projects at the Institute of People's Medicine in 1960s and later.
and some former empty lamas engaged it, who survived it, engaged it in the sacred miracle practice during that time. And also hundreds of prop uh, propaganda movies, drama, novels, cartoons, uh, which assaulted Sawaripa medicine and those promoting mod medicine were produced. But uh, those violence and propaganda never resulted in the complete disappearance of Tibetan medicine in Mongolia. Uh, here we have some pictures. And this is uh, Russian doctors and uh, uh, Tibetan doctors. And also uh, this uh, old Russian is very famous Russian physician who worked in Mongolia in 1920s, who played very important role to establish the, uh, Russian hospitals. And also this is a Russian Tibetologist. And this is the uh, trial of monks in 1937, uh, uh, and another one. And also we have uh, some sites of ma massacre, which uh, uh, yeah, during the Great Forge in Mongolia. And we have uh, hundreds of such uh, sites recently found in Mongolia, with bones and schools. And after the Great Forge, uh, we, a controversial uh, scientist who called it Haidu played a very important role in the revi revival of Savaripa tradition in Mongolia. He, he, he graduated, graduated from Soviet medical school in 1946. And with uh, personal request and s s strong support from Mongolian chairman, chairman uh, communist leader, Tsetumbal, and his uh, Russian wife, he carried out a uh, survey of surviving Maramba in the country. And he only find only uh, he found only five uh, surviving uh, practitioners. So the reason why this uh, Mongolian leader uh, wanted to revive this tradition is also related with Soviet Union because uh, Soviets also started to uh, they own studies on Savaripa and also they. There, there, there have been some uh, re revival in Soviet Union. So, and then some Soviet, Soviet leaders asked Mongolian communist leaders to send some uh, Soviet experts to them, and also they w wanted to take some consultation with Mongolian Soviet uh, practitioners. But uh, and so this uh, triggered th th that uh, uh, re revival of Soviet in Mongolia. And uh, with the surviving, so I told about only five uh, practitioners left. And with support of those uh, five uh, Mirambas, in Mongolia, we, in Tibet, you call uh, Savaripa practitioners M.G. But, but uh, in Mongolia, we use Tibetan word, Mimba, Mimba or Mirambas. So with this, uh, those five members, uh, he first uh, uh, carried out some uh, missile plant survey in Mongolia. And uh, after that survey, they published a, a glossary of uh, uh, missile plants used in traditional Mongolian medicine. And uh, also after that, he established a laboratory of Mongolian traditional drugs, uh, drugs and plants in 19... 55, and in 1975, he expanded his laboratory into Institute of Na uh, National uh, Natural Compounds. And later, this institute is uh, become Institute of People's M Medicine in 1981. And uh, during this time, Tibetan medicine was uh, the name of Tibetan medicine, or Savaripa was changed into Mongolian name. As we call, call it. It's, it means it has uh, uh, some double meaning: uh, Mong Mong Mongolian people's medicine or the folk medicine. And also, Rinchen Rinpo from uh, uh, Dharamsala was officially used in the uh, some hospital. 
where uh, countries, communist leaders, receive tra traditional medicine. And uh, we have some fig uh, photo here. He is the Sittenbald, the communist leader, and uh, he is the uh, head of the scientist. He is in, in, uh, visiting and inspecting his uh, works. And also this head is carrying out some uh, scientific <coughs> tests on animals. Because uh, actually, <coughs> Uh, because uh, Savaric was Buddhist medicine, its violence is not. Uh, we, we, we always say that we are uh, non violence uh, medicine, but they uh, killed lo dozens of animals in order to test how uh, efficacy and sa safety of uh, Savaric drugs. And uh, also, we have this picture. Uh, the, here are two. Uh, uh, Mirambas, who survived the killing, and uh, later who worked at the, that institute. And this one is the Mirambas Basanjo, Basanjo, and this one is Mirambas Dorjijansa, who were very famous at, during that time. And also, th this is another one, Mirambas Sanjajo, from Western Mongolia, who survived the ten, y ten years of imprisonment, and uh, later recruited by the institute. And he uh, translated lots of uh, Tibetan medical t uh, texts into Mongolian. And th 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 this is a, f uh, a photo of my first Savarikpa uh, teacher with his holiness. Also, he was uh, also in prison for 10 years at the uh, Stalin's uh, prison and later became a librarian at the National Library. And also, this man has very uh, Interesting life history. Also, he was uh, uh, worked at the Academy of Sciences as a Tibetan translator, and also he continued his sacred practice in the Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. And also, d during the communist time, we had several uh, visitors from Tibet, China, and India, Bhutan also. And this one is Tungso uh, Pimadorje from Bhutan in 1980s. And finally, uh, this uh, the scientist is receiving a distinguished scientist award from the Mongolian president in 19, uh, 2002. And also, we have uh, Mongols in Ch China, yeah, Inner Mongolian Autonomous re Region. Uh, in Inner Mongolia, uh, uh, some uh, some quite different uh, hi uh, history. Uh, having it, because uh, uh, in China, after the establishment of People's Republic of China, and also the Inner Mongolian Autonomous Region was founded, a new state encouraged traditional medicine, because th there was some also you know this manpower a shortage of manpower. And uh, maybe you heard about this system of barefoot do doctors. So it it uh, was uh, it bring some brought some uh, positive development to the traditional medicine in China. But <coughs> for the sorry, but some uh, transformation happened, and of course uh, some national flower is added, and the name of the uh, tradition is changed into Mongolian medicine. And also, lots of uh, texts are uh, translated because of the, there was some movement to the Tibetanization and uh, secularization of newly invented uh, Mongolian medicine. And Mambatasan educated uh, Mongolian MG Lamas played active role in that process. And uh, today we, <coughs> we have uh, more than 10,000 officially registered practitioners in uh, Inner Mongolia. And there are, uh, also there are uh, government uh, established medical centers yeah. and 41 uh, Mongolian me medical uh, hospital in Inner Mongolia and three in Xinjiang, one in Liaoning, Helenjong, Gansu and Chinghua provinces. And this is one of the examples of Mimbatatsung educated monks who later in involved with the making Sawaribwa 
into Mongolia mission in 1920s. And also I met one, one of them and <coughs> recently during my field work in Inner Mongolia. And this is the uh, Inner Mongolia National University. And they have uh, quite big school of uh, Mongolian medicine and also affiliated the uh, uh, hospital of uh, Mongolian traditional medicine. And also uh, the state is sponsoring a lot, investing a lot of money to the, uh, money to the uh, traditional medicine, and this one is uh, one of the district hospitals in Inner Mongolia. It, it, it has uh, quite big building, you know, uh, almost 10, 10 stores high and very good decorated. And this is the pharmacy of that uh, hosp uh, hospital. And they also use same, you know, uh, uh, traditional drugs and also Western drugs. And uh, they have also this uh, pharmaceutical unit at that uh, hospital. But this ph pharmaceutical company is owned by a uh, uh, Chinese uh, official from Beijing. And also there are some uh, pr uh, private f practitioners in uh, Mongolia. And after the so so Soviet Union collapsed, we embraced the democratic change in 1990 and tra the policy on traditional medicine liberalized and hospitals started to offer service of traditional medicine again. And uh, because of the Soviet Union was financially supported Mongolia and we lost that support and <coughs> During that uh, tr transitional time, traditional medicine played also a very important role for the drug uh, shortage striking healthcare system in Mongolia. And also, you know, we adopted this uh, name of Mongolian traditional medicine. It's maybe because of Inner Mongolia in 1990s. And Mongolia is one of the 25 countries which uh, where a national policy on the traditional medicine is imp implemented among uh, 129 WHO member states. And the draft policy on development of Mongolian traditional medicine was discussed at the conference on national policy regarding uh, traditional medicine in uh, 1999, and it was adopted by the state uh, parliament in 1999. And th this document uh, contains plans for developing uh, Mongolian traditional medicine over the next 10 to 15 years, and it covers 19 different areas of work. And the Ministry of Health issued a national program, which is based on this policy. And we have some statistics that we, uh, almost all government uh, funded hospitals have a unit of uh, traditional Mongolian medicine and uh, in private sector we have uh, 93 outpatient cl clinics and 22 inpatient hospitals. And there, there are uh, 7,584 physicians. It's both uh, traditional and uh, commercial uh, medical doctors. And among them are 780 uh, practitioners of uh, Mongolian traditional medicine. And these numbers are uh, gradually increasing. And there are six manufacturing units and 200 different, uh, they are producing 200 different herbal products. And the first volume of pharmacopoeia of uh, traditional Mongolian medicine was published in last year. And the education system was established in 1991. And uh, so far, 1,838 practitioners have graduated, and 33.8% uh, are undergraduates, and 637 uh, are postgraduate degree holders among the, these practitioners. And there are six schools offering 
six year six year undergraduate and two two year postgraduate postgraduate training on in uh, traditional medicine. And uh, 285 students have graduated in last year. And now <coughs> we have two 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 different school of thoughts in Mongolia. One is uh, following the, this uh, scientist uh, who established that uh, uh, Institute of Traditional Medicine, which is very scientific-minded and very rash uh, rationalized form of traditional medicine, which is separated the uh, Buddhism and uh, traditional medicine. And another one is the uh, we have a Mambatatsang. Uh, uh, quite big one, which is uh, founded by a monk called Natsugdarche, who studied uh, for a short time at the uh, Minzikan in the 1990s. And his students uh, uh, more uh, take more co conservative kind of uh, tradition. So this, uh, he is the member uh, of founder uh, Natsugdarche. And he, this one is his temple, and inside of temple, and this is the Mambatatsan Tensor, which has a hospital and also a school of traditional medicine. And those are graduates of his school. So this is a brief introduction about Mongolian traditional medicine. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. So uh, I'm very uh, on behalf of all the uh, attendees. I'd like to really, from a deep heart, to thank for Dr. to Dr. Kanzori by giving elaborate history background and the current status of Mongolian. So as uh, in the history we have in Tibet and Mongol like like twin, you know, in the on many aspects, so uh, this many can up and down in the history uh, remind us that maybe there are some very important knowledge hidden in Mongolian because they have a little bit better situation now. So, uh, so I think still more cooperation may be needed in, in from the uh, both sides so that whatever is missing, whatever has been damaged, has to be recovered. So it is the work of many you know that can really hold the sorry first system uh, back to its original so anyhow now we have not much time i like to uh, give the floor to the uh, the attendant for some one of one only one question so that uh, we have yeah please tell uh, which uh, uh, base document regulated uh, um, work of the specialties and uh, and our Which document? Uh, base document uh, uh, in uh, regulations. Uh -huh. Okay, we have a uh, act on healthcare system, and also uh, th this is uh, generally regulated in the practice of traditional medicine, and also we have an act uh, on health product uh, drugs and health health ca healthcare products this is this one this act is regulated in the production and sale of the uh, traditional drugs can we uh, see these documents on the website yeah i think you can yeah it's uh, on the website of ministry of health thank you yeah thank you so sorry because we have not my time before concluding the session i like to uh, just give one announcement because of some kind of announcement I have to make. So here, those who are the speaker who are taking that part in the speaking, so and please contact after this uh, session to with Dr. Dawa Sering or Dr. Sering Samjit, the lady who is organizing their two doctors, only for those who are the uh, speakers. And those who are just attendants, so they can just contact with doc, uh, Dr. Dojit Tamdila and Dr. Rapka, is here. So please uh, contact them. There are some kind of program for the you know, uh, two group. Yeah. So anyhow, now we, uh, we conclude here. And uh, we on behalf of CCM, I uh, want to offer gratitude with this token of yeah.